Hello friends, in this video we'll discuss what exactly Bessel's function is, what is the use and what are the different formulas involved while solving the problems. So friends, we are starting with Bessel's function. If you ask your senior which topic is the most difficult of mathematics, students generally say Bessel's function. Why? Because the examples in this particular chapters are a bit complicated, so it's very difficult to solve as well as the formulas are a bit complicated. But friends, don't worry. The best thing about the chapter is that there are few limited problems which generally repeat in the exams. So I'll give you tricks and tips to solve the problems. Let us start with Bessel's function and let us start to check what exactly is Bessel function. So Bessel function is given by j n x and the formula is this summation of m is equal to 0 to infinity minus 1 raised to m x by 2 raised to 2m plus n upon m factorial into gamma of n plus m plus 1. So friends this is gamma not square root. So there is difference between gamma and square root that we'll discuss later. And what is the exact use of Bessel function? See this kind of equation. To solve this particular type of equation, Bessel function is required. Now friends, why this chapter is complicated? Because student generally can't remember the formula. Why? Because the formulas are complicated. So let us see how we are going to remember the formulas. There are 8 formulas and will tell you the way you are going to write it down in the exam. So whenever, as soon as get you, you get your paper, just go back on the last page and write down the formulas, all the formulas. Don't try to remember the formulas. Remember the way to write the formulas. Let us start with the first formula. d by dx of x raised to n into j n x. Now friends, we do have derivative. What derivative does? x cube. What is the derivative? 3x square. So cube will reduce to x square. So generally derivative reduce, reduces the power. So here it will reduce n to n minus 1. So this is the first formula. Next, this thing you write it down here. Remember the way I am writing. You write it down here. The same copy x raised to n j n minus 1 x into dx. What integration does x raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1? x square integration is x cube upon 3. In integration increases the power. That means, I will give the tricks. j n x is my present. j n plus 1 is future. This is our technique. And j n minus 1 is past. So, remember this way nx is present, n plus 1 is future, n minus 1 is past. So derivative first formula will take Bessel function to past. So n will be n minus 1. What integration does in the second formula will take it to the future because it increases the value. So that will be x raised to n into j n x. Hope these two formulas are clear. Let's move on to the third formula. Again derivative. But this time it is x raised to minus n j n x. What derivative does? It takes Bessel function to the past. When? When we do have x raised to n. Here we do have x raised to minus n. Therefore the effect will be opposite. So generally derivative takes it to the past. But here since it is minus n the effect will be opposite and derivative will take Bessel function to the future. So you need to remember here there will be minus x raised to minus n and it will take to the future. Next formula, this term, write it down here with integration x raised to minus n j n plus 1 x dx. What integration does? Takes basal function to the future but since we do have x raised to minus n the effects will be reverse and will take it to the past. So x raised to minus n j n x because j n plus 1 past is j n and here we will have minus sign. Are you clear with this four formulas? Let us move on with the five fifth formula. There are eight formulas. Fifth one j dash n x equal to 
see the way I'm writing n by x j n x. Here it is plus, right? Minus and then plus. Is this clear? Plus, minus, and plus. Sixth one, j dash n x minus plus and minus. Hope this is clear. The first is plus minus plus and the second is minus plus and minus. You are going to add 5 and 6. So, you will get your 7 formula. So, if you add this term will be cancelled because 1 is plus, 1 is minus. So, you will get 2 j dash n x equal to j n minus 1 x minus j n plus 1 x. So, this is the seventh formula and the last is you are going to subtract 5 and 6. So, if you subtract 5 and 6, these two terms will be cancelled and you will be left with 2 n by x j n x equal to j n minus 1 x plus j n plus 1 x. So, if subtracting you will get this. Now, when to use which formula? From 5th to 8th, when to use which formula? If you want to express, I am talking about 5th formula, if you want to express j dash that is derivative of n x into present n future, present is n, future is n plus 1, you will be using formula number 5. For formula number 6, if you want to express derivative that is j dash n x into present and past, you are going to use formula number 6. If you want derivative to be expressed as past and future, then you are going to use formula number 7. And in formula number 8, if you want to express j n x into past and future. So, difference between 7 and 8 is in 7, it is derivative of j n and in 8th formula, it is plain j n x. So, these are the formulas. Now, do not try to remember 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I will tell you, I have told you the tricks to remember the formula. So, just pause this video and write it down all the formulas on one page. And while watching the videos, please make sure that you keep all the 8 formulas in front of you while solving the problem. Let us discuss one more concept that is gamma because gamma is required here. Gamma of n plus 1 is n gamma n. This is the formula. And gamma of half is equal to root pi. Gamma of n plus 1 is n factorial if n is integer. So, if you get gamma of phi is 4 factorial, that is it. Why? Because this phi is integer. So, what are you going to do? Reduce 1 and take gamma. So, gamma phi 4 factorial. Suppose you get gamma 6, reduce 1 and take factorial 5 factorial. And if n is not an integer, for example, this is the case, let us say gamma phi by 2. So, you cannot write reduce 1 and take factorial, it is not possible because factorial of fraction not possible. So, in this case, what you are going to do is n gamma n, reduce 1 and take gamma. So, if you subtract 5 by 2, 5 by 2 minus 1 is 3 by 2, you are going to take gamma. This 3 by 2 will remain as it is, this one, this 3 by 2 again reduce 1. So, 3 by 2 minus 1 is 1 by 2 and take gamma and gamma of half is root pi, say this. So, this is actually a gamma function, but two possibilities, if it is integer, just subtract 1 and take factorial, gamma 7, 6 factorial, gamma 100, 99 factorial. If it is not integer, the formula is n gamma n. Reduce 1 and take gamma. So, gamma 5 by 2, if you reduce 1, 3 by 2 and gamma 3 by 2. So, this 3 by 2 will remain as it is, this one, gamma 3 by 2, reduce 1, half into gamma half and gamma half you need to remember as root pi. So, friends, remember the 8 formulas that will be required in the next examples. Thank you.